Good soldering is essential for the correct operation and reliability of all circuit boards you build or repair. With the help of this video, a good soldering iron and a little practice, most people should be able to produce sound solder joints without difficulty. First, let's look at the essentials of a good solder joint. The circuit board pad, the component lead and the tip of the soldering iron must be clean and shiny. Tarnished or oxidised metal won't take solder no matter how long you heat it. To clean the pads and track on a circuit board, use an abrasive rubbing block. To keep the tip in good condition, use tip tinner and cleaner and remember to store all components in a clean, dry place. Use a modern soldering iron with a fine tip. This 25 watt Antex XS iron with a 2.3 mm chisel tip is ideal for most PCB work. A complete range of Antex soldering irons and stations will be found in the catalogue section of this CD under the soldering equipment and accessories heading. When you insert component leads through the holes in a circuit board, bend them outward like this, so that the component is held firmly in place. Do not insert too many components at one time in order to prevent the leads becoming cluttered. Place the board on a workbench and make sure that it cannot slide around during soldering. A mat or cloth placed under the board may help. Switch the soldering iron on and wait about five minutes for it to warm up before use. When hot, apply a little solder to the tip and wipe on a damp sponge. Repeat this operation regularly during soldering to prevent a build-up of flux or excessive solder on the tip. For the majority of modern miniature circuit boards, you will find it easy to use the finer 22SWG solder rather than the thicker 18SWG type. To make the solder joint, apply the tip face directly to the exact point where the lead and the pad touch and apply the solder at the same time feeding it in as it melts. Remove the iron and the solder as soon as the solder flows freely around the pad and component lead. As you will see, the whole operation only takes a few seconds. You will soon get a feel for how much solder to use. Inspect each joint thoroughly to make sure the solder has flowed right around the joint and has formed a shiny little fillet of solder like this around the wire. This is a good solid joint. If there is a blob or bead of solder on the joint, it may be that you have used a bit too much solder. Try reapplying the clean soldering iron tip. Melt the solder around the joint and remove the iron, taking some of the solder away on the iron. If there is still too much solder there, use a solder sucker or desolder braid to remove the solder and start again. If you end up with a joint that looks like this, with a dull, sometimes misshaped surface, you have used too much heat for too long, and the flux in the solder, which is needed to prevent oxidisation on the surface of the joint, has boiled away. If there isn't too much solder already on the joint, try reheating and applying just a touch more solder, and pulling the iron away as soon as it melts and flows around the joint. If this doesn't work, or you end up with too much solder, use the solder sucker or braid to remove it and try again. If the solder joint looks like this, with the solder sticking to part of the joint and not the rest, or beading on the pad instead of flowing smoothly into it, you will have to remove the solder, scrape and clean the wire and pad and try again. You may have had some grease or tarnish on the metal surfaces, or you may have had several goes and ended up with too much burnt flux over the joint. When the joint looks right, use a pair of miniature cutters or shears to get right up close to the joint and cut off the spare lead. You will find a full range of cutters in the catalogue section of this CD under the tools heading. As with most things, good technique will only be gained with practice. It's not difficult to produce reliable joints time after time if you just remember these basic points. Use the right tools and solder for the job. Make sure all of the metal surfaces are shiny and clean before you start. Don't be afraid to use plenty of heat, but do it quickly, although you must wait for the solder to flow before removing the iron. And finally, don't forget that a complete range of soldering irons and accessories are available from Maplin MPS. Full details are shown in the catalogue section of this CD.